Hey everybody, uh, so this is now section 4 where we're getting started with convolutions. So in this first video we're going to be looking at introductions, convolutions, so what it is and what is weight sharing. So a convolution can be thought of as a similar operation to a linear layer, but basically what it does is it allows us to do the computation over a smaller range as opposed to over the whole image like you would do with um, a linear layer. So what we're going to do is, instead of multiplying the whole layer by a big matrix, what we do is we take kind of a subset or a smaller um, matrix, and we're just going to pop this matrix on this 3x3 three three section up here. And then we're going to multiply each value of the input tensor, so of the image, by the corresponding value of the um, filter weight or the filter kernel is what this blue bit's called. And then what we do is we just add them all up, so the products of these values and the filter weights, and then we'll place it right in here just like that. So here's the first example. So you can see we've done 2 times 1 plus 3 times 1 plus 4 times 1 plus 6 times 1, etc, 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 and that gives us a value of 38. Okay, now if let's say these were different values in here, so they weren't all one. I've chosen one because it's an easy example to see. So let's say this was a two. All that would happen is you do two times one, three times one, four times one, six times one, four times two, one times one, etc., etc. So if this, as a little example now, if this had a two in the middle, this value would be 42 because it's two, four times two. And then what we do, that's not it complete. What we, the idea is then we pass this kernel over the whole of the image, okay? So we're just gonna slide it all the way along. Okay, so if that makes sense. So now we're looking at kind of the local information around pixels. So here you can go, we're sliding along. And you just keep going. until you're almost all the way there. Okay, so notice each time we've just moved the filter along a little bit, 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 etc, etc. And what this does is it basically, rather than, so let's say you were, if you had a linear layer and you were looking at information in the top left corner of the image, what might happen is you, if you were doing a linear layer, you might end up effectively wasting computation when the resultant output in the lower side. Okay, so if you were to vectorize this image, multiply it by a linear layer, you might find that the top corner of the image has nothing to do with the bottom right corner of the image. And effectively then what you're doing is wasting computation. So that's not really of any interest, right? Um, so what you can do is you can do this convolution type operator, which effectively should be more efficient. So often our inputs are three-dimensional, okay? So remember the PyTorch tensor is a four-dimensional object where the first one is the batch, and then you've got channels, height, width. So what we have here is channels and height and width, etc., etc. So what you need to do is when we have channel dimension we just make sure that our kernel or filter it's called both things is has the same channel dimension as your input tensor okay and then what we do is we'll just place this kernel on this three by three here but then also this second channel kernel will go on this three by three behind and the third on the three by three behind that okay so then we're just sliding it along on each channel okay so we're effectively doing three two-dimensional convolutions in parallel but then what you do is you sum up their values in the end so you only end up with one channel output okay so it's just important to kind of like process this in your head for a little bit so you need to make sure that your input channels matches your filter channels and you only get a single output channel 
Okay, so just have a think about it, you know, just in your head. Imagine now you've just got filters and you're just sliding the values along. That's all you're doing, nothing special. And then you're just placing the outputs in an image. Okay, and these images are the output sensors of a smaller size, but we're going to talk about how we know that size a priori in a later video. Good. Okay, so how do we learn convolutions? You just learn it using stochastic gradient descent. So like in the linear layer example, where we just learned the, the linear matrix, we just learn the weights of the filter using stochastic gradient descent. So just in the standard way, really nothing special about how you learn them. It's just how you perform them that can be quite niche and hard to understand initially. But yeah, so you just learn them in a very um, standard way off the shelf using SGD.